Hey everybody. Late last night I decided to have a little fun with the Cube Pure Plexi. Many years ago I did a video on overclocking a Simpron, AMD Simpron 3400 Plus CPU from its stock 1.8 gigahertz to 2.25 gigahertz, a 450 megahertz overclock, and I thought that was pretty impressive then. So I figured, hey, what the heck, let's do the equivalent of Chevrolet's putting a 2.7 liter four cylinder in a full size Silverado. <laughs> yeah, I pulled out the Athlon 64 dual core 4400 plus processor out of the Plexi and I put in the Simpron 3400 plus single core. Yeah, <laughs> talk about a huge downgrade. But I'm like, I want to see how this thing can overclock. And guys, get this. You'd be surprised what this thing's running at. I'll, I'll reveal it in just a moment. Anyways, it's the QPQ Plexi has the Gigabyte, uh, what model board is this? It's Sony or somewhere. GA-MA74GM-S2 socket AM2 AM2 Plus board. Definitely a bit newer than the processor that's installed in it. And you can see I have the same heatsink fan that I was running the on the previous chip still on there. Yeah, just take that just take a moment to think about that. Um that heatsink fan was the box fan that came with the AMD Phenom 2 905E quad core CPU, a 65 watt TDP processor. The Simpron has like a 59 watt TDP or something like that. The RAM I'm running is just your basic DDR2 memory, not sure exactly which it is. Um, I think it's. Let me see. The SPD. Yeah, it's like PC2 4300. <laughs> not, not all that spectacular. All right, sorry about that. I had to take a second hand off my camera. So, you guys may be wondering. Okay, so Nick, what is this thing? What is this thing running at? Well, let's have a look. You'll be surprised at how well Simprons can overclock. Yeah, close to 2.6 gigahertz. Yeah. A near 800 megahertz overclock on this thing using air cooling. Now that's pretty impressive. Um, to be honest, it will actually boot up and run stable for the most part at 2.6 gigahertz with the bus speed set at 290, but the motherboard, for some reason, will not cold post. Like if you shut down the machine and you try to start it, it will fail. And the motherboard goes into its safe boot mode where it will boot off of ba uh, default settings to allow you to go in and restabilize the system. But when I set the bus speed to 285 and I had the RAM set on uh, you know, FSB to DRAM ratio of CPU to 9. So at, at um, when this is at 290 it will, it will not post from cold but I can go into the BIOS and set it to 290 with the voltage at 1.5 and I can restart it all day long and it restarts and posts just fine and Windows is stable but yeah it will not call post I was able to actually boot into Windows at 2.7 gigahertz but it was not stable it wasn't happy uh, it, would, it, would, it would crash out and stuff like that but at 2.6 gigahertz or 2.57 it seems happy <laughs> Now, granted, this is still not as fast as the 4400 plus dual core I had in here, but that's pretty impressive bump performance in performance considering this was like the budget version of an Athlon 64 single core. I mean, this thing it it, it really responded to. I mean, performance wise, you you could tell a, a difference in performance with this overclock. It's pretty impressive, I must say. So there are several different variants of Simpron processors that were released for Socket AM2. This one in particular has 256K of L2 cache. There is, an, there is another one that's called the Simpron 3200 Plus, also based off the Manila codename, you know, same core. 
uh, same stock 1.8 gigahertz clock, but has only 128 kilobytes of L2. So yeah, there's there's a few different models. Um, I have I have several of those. I don't think I'm gonna really waste my time on trying to overclock one of those, but I might just drop one in and see what it can do. Who knows? I also have a Simpron. I think it's a 1300 LE. I can find what I've done with it. I'm looking through my stash of CPUs right now, so that's why I'm, that's why I kind of walked away from the camera. But I have several different Simprons that came out of budget-in computers, and back then I would always swap out the Simprons for Athlon 64s and Athlon 64X2s whenever I had them, because the Athlon 64X2, well, yeah, or even the the Athlon 64 single core. At stock clocks would perform considerably better than a uh, <laughs> than a Sim, let's say a Simpron LE. Okay, let's go ahead and look up some processors, shall we? And we'll demonstrate the the not so perfect performance of <laughs> of this Simpron and why I wouldn't recommend really using one. I mean, it, it's it, it. Now, to be honest, for basic functionality, it does fine. It's just, it's definitely not as powerful as what was in here. I must say. So I'm gonna launch Chrome, and there's a CPU usage indicator in the corner there. Like even the hard drive is not being run wide open like it normally would when launching stuff. As you see, we are wide open. In case you're wondering about temperatures with that uh, heatsink fan, it gets up to about 53 degrees C under full load after a while, but and it idles at about 35. And these are the actual core temps measured off the processor itself. So let me go and see if I can pull up. So the 3400, here's what's currently installed in here, I think. It's the SDA 3400IAA3CN. Yeah, Simprom Manila Socket AM2, 1800 megahertz real clock, 1.8 gigahertz. It was released back in 2006. 256 kilobytes of L2 cache. Max operating temperature. And it's only 55 degrees C to 69 degrees C, so they're not really specific there. <laughs> I will say that uh, this thing. Um, 2.6 is like the, the max on this thing can do. Above that, as I mentioned, it gets unstable. I tried force feeding it some extra volts up to, I think I tried up to about 1.6 volts and it just, it just didn't like it. Um, but 1.5 to 1.525, it seems, it seems like it can happily run at near 2.6 gears, which is, again, pretty impressive. Open a new tab here, and let's look up a different one. I'm just pulling this out of my history. So this here is the other one, the Simpron 3200 Plus. It's based off of Manila, but only has 128 kilobytes of of L2 cache. Same thermal design power. Yeah, I don't really think I'm gonna bother dropping this one in to see what it can do because it's basically the same processor processor with just half the L2 cache enabled. There is a look at this processor. Now another Simpron that I have that I might try just for the heck of it is this one right here. I pulled this out of a machine for an upgrade years ago. Well, if the camera will focus on it, that'd be great. It is an SD. Let me pull up a new tab here. It is an SDH 1300. Let's see, IAA. Uh, 
There's so much dust on top of it. Yeah, 40p. So this one. On CPU World. Shows it as being. It is a 2.3 gigahertz. Sparta. With 512 kilobytes of L2 cache. Based off the. 65 micron silicon SOI um, technology. The other ones were um, 90, you know, 0 0.0095. So I may, yeah, look, look at the thermal design power, 45 watts. So it's a, um, it's a power sipping Simpron that has as much L2 cache as the older single core Athlon 64. So I'm going to probably be dropping this into the Plex and see what I can do with it. See how high it can overclock. It also has a much higher starting clock speed of 2.3 GHz versus 1.8 GHz of the older Simpron. So yeah, like I said, it's, it's pretty impressive what the Simpron, at least the older Simprons, can do. And, I mean, even though this Simpron here is not a very powerful processor, I could keep it in here and use this machine for its intended task of just basic run-of-the-mill imaging hard drives and file backup and things like that. The Plexi doesn't usually get used for anything real hardcore. So, there is an 800, near 800 megahertz server clock on the uh, Simpron 3400 Plus socket AM2. In the next segment, I'm going to drop in the 1300LE and see what I can do. Okay, so I just got to finish setting all the uh, bio settings back to default for the CPU clock and whatnot. I've already shut the machine down, and we'll go ahead and swap out this for the Simpron 1300 LE. I'm curious to see what we can get out of that one. And with the extra L2 cache versus the current Simpron we have here, curious how it will perform for like web browsing and things like that. Wipe this off real good. Now, last night I flashed the BIOS on this board, and I tell you, it was about a, it about gave me a heart attack. <laughs> because I tell you, when flash on Windows 10, yeah, it's sketchy, very sketchy. Um, it did flash successfully after a couple of different tries. I had to first get the latest version of WinFlash, and then it went to erase the boot block and failed at about 80%. It's like, oh, great, let's hope we don't lose power. Um, Eventually, what I did is I ran um, WinFlash in compatibility mode for Windows XP, <laughs> and it successfully erased the boot block and was able to program it, and it updated the BIOS. And what's funny is, hindsight, I think this board has a easy flash option. I can't remember for sure. We'll find out in a moment. I'll have to look into BIOS and see. That was really good. Yeah, this little heatsink fan has been used for so many different things. It's crazy. <laughs> it never got it. It never actually got used for its original processor. I'll say that much. <laughs> But the original processor that came with run it ran so cool that uh you could pass it cool it with a giant heat pipe um, heat sink fan assembly. Now I can literally turn off the fan and it would actually not overheat even under full load. 
which was pretty cool. So off camera I'm going to apply some thermal paste to this uh, heat sink. I always apply it to the smallest of the two items. If the CPU heat spreader is smaller, I'll apply it to that. If the base of the cooler is smaller, I'll apply it to that. And the thermal compound I'm using is stuff that they sold at Best Buy under its insignia brand. It seems to do pretty well. Probably not as good as like Arctic Silver or anything like that, but. And what's this crazy, there's always a huge, there's always a big debate about spreading versus putting a big blob in the center. I've tried it both ways actually. In some cases using a blob is, is more effective and in other cases just putting you know, spread, putting a blob in the, on the side and spreading it across is more effective. It really depends. That is, sim that is simply the one argument that will never die. Is should you spread it or should you put a blob in the center? So yeah, I updated this to the latest BIOS to hopefully ensure that uh, this board will see all these different CPUs okay. I had, I actually did at one point run this Simpron 1300 LE in the TV box. This motherboard would run it, but it did not know what kind of CPU it was running. It would say AMD processor uh, architecture unknown or something like that. Okay, it's installed. And here is the processor that we just pulled out. Poor little fella. <laughs> got, got seriously overclocked. Which, for those who are pretty young and don't know, or at least aren't familiar with the early days of overclocking, that's what it essentially started out as was you go in and buy the, the cheapest, you know, almost cheapest Intel Celeron or AMD Duron at the time. And in many cases, you could, with a good overclock, you'll perform like the equivalent Pentium 2 or Pentium 3 or Athlon at the, you know, that was, it was competing with. And you would actually save quite a bit of money by doing that. As a matter of fact, so the earlier Celerons had an advantage over the Pentium 2s. The Pentium 2s didn't have on board, didn't have on CPU L2 cache, whereas the Celeron did, I believe. And with a good overclock, get a huge boost in performance, and it would actually run better, in, in some cases better than the much more expensive Pentium, or Pentium 2 or Pentium 3. All right, so I'm going to start this thing up. It is posting. I gotta press this button on my KVM switch. Let's see if I get into the bias. Okay, maybe this one does not offer the. Easy flash. Well, we would usually see it. No, actually, no. There is that. Yeah, Q flash. <laughs> so really, I could have just put that BIOS file on a USB stick and just loaded in that way. Why in the world did I not think of that? It was probably because it was 2 a.m. So this one, the voltage default voltage is 1.3 volts. So let's go ahead and. Boot into Windows.
So this is under, this is totally stock right now. Is doing the not fast startup because uh, okay. Yes, yeah, because we swapped CPUs, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Windows 10 behaves a little different than previous version of Windows as far as when you go to swap your CPU. Oh, that's great. Why did it crash? <laughs> that's great. Okay. Okay, we're finally in Windows now. That was really, really bizarre. Uh, yeah, Windows 10 8299 apparently does not like CPU changes without blue screen for random reasons. <laughs> but we're in now. Um... Let's have a look at our processor. So now we're running the Simpron 1300 LE Sparta. The stock clock is 2.3 gigahertz. Stock voltage is about 1.3 volts, I think. We can pull up the uh, CPU world data sheet and see for sure. I will say that this this particular Simpron is performing better than the other one, even with its pretty massive overclock. What in the world is this? So we'll look at CPU world again. There is another look at the general specs. So now I'm going to start playing around with this thing see what I can get it to do. Also, don't forget, let's go and look at our temperatures. It's funny it's not showing temperatures on this. Maybe I need a newer version of horror monitor. Okay, everybody, here's an update on that Simpron overclock. The Simpron LE 1300, I was able to get up to 3 gigahertz and not have stability problems. I had the voltage set to about 1.375 or 1.35, one of those two. The stock voltage on that chip was 1.3. And it was stable, but at first I was having issues with the memory. Um, I had to swap out the first memory module. Uh, for a different one, and that solved that, but I, I was ended up running into an issue with Windows 10. And it was after I had to clear the CMOS and resell the settings because due to the memory, or due, yeah, due to the issues I was having, I had to clear and reset the CMOS and re reapply all the settings. And apparently there was one setting I had messed up. I don't know exactly what it was, but I got it fixed now. But um, it was really weird. Uh, Windows 10 would hang at the boot screen at the little blue flag, and it seemed like forever, unless I had this USB stick plugged into the machine. If this was plugged in, it would boot up right away. And I suspected, oh, it was a Windows 10 problem, or not Windows 10 problem, but I suspected that it had to do with something getting corrupted due to the overclock. So that, among other reasons, I went ahead and reloaded Windows 10 on the Plexi. I went from 32-bit to 64-bit as well because I wanted to go and get that done over with. And... To my surprise, the issue persisted. 
uh, yeah, it kept doing it. Turns out if I sat there for like a minute or so, it eventually it would boot up. But turns out it was a combination of a motherboard setting interfering with this card reader. If I unplug this card reader, it would boot up just fine. But the card reader was plugged in, it would take like 30 seconds or so before it would actually proceed to boot into Windows. You would see the Windows flag up top, but after about 30 to 40 seconds, you would eventually see the little spinning dots. And it was, it was aggravating. Uh, but I did get it figured out. So you may be wondering about the performance. Well, it was still kind of pathetic. Uh, it wasn't all that great. I mean, single core processor with just 512K of L2 cache, no level 3 cache. Yeah, not that great. So I did go ahead and take out that Simpron 1300 LE and I swapped in an Athlon 2 dual core 245E. This is a socket AM3 processor backwards compatible with this AM2 motherboard. And there are some specs on it. It is a 2.9 gigahertz processor with two times one meg of L2 cache. You know, the Athlon 2s were lacking the level 3 cache that you would find on the Phenom 2. So this one only has just the L2 and the L1. But this is a this is definitely a well, a well performing processor even compared to the X2 4400 plus Ace I have in this machine. Now right now this processor is still running at stock clock. I may try overclocking it later on just to see what I can get out of it, just just for fun. But anyways, yeah, the second Sim Prime, the memory controller was just very finicky with it. Uh, the first one wasn't, but. I still say I got pretty impressive overclocks out of those two processors. The first one went from 1.8 to, geez, what was it, like 2.6, 2.7, something like that. And the uh, second one went from 2.3 to 3 gigahertz. So, yeah, both of them were pretty spectacular overclocks, I think. Especially given that they were just being overclocked on just this basic boxed uh, AMD heatsink fan. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Well guys, that's it for this one. But it doesn't have to be. There's plenty more videos on the channel to check out. Also, if you liked the video, please click the like button. And if you absolutely hated it, there is the alternative button as well. But yeah, please subscribe to the channel. I definitely appreciate it. And remember to click the bell so that we get notified of all updates. Also, if you're interested in things aside from computers and technology, check out my second channel. It's CubeCompMTDX. Over there you'll find videos about weather, elevators, bicycling, and pretty much whatever else I figure out to upload. So yeah, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thank you for your support.